Everybody. Welcome to the Energy News Beat Podcast. My name is Stu Turley, President and CEO of the Sandstone Group. I'll tell you what, the world is going bonkers. There's a great awakening going on around the world right now. Everybody knows that things are bigger in Texas. Have you ever wondered why they're bigger in Texas? Well, I have somebody that stops by that is the Texas director for the American for Prosperity. Welcome, Genevieve Collins, and I am so happy to visit with you today. My friend, I'm so happy to be back. Thank you for all you're doing, and congratulations on everyone that's listening and all the great stuff that you're producing. (laughs) Isn't it crazy since it's been a year since you and I visited and the number of people, it's because of great guests. No, it's because of a great host who has asks great questions that listeners want to hear. So kudos to you. Okay. I will pay you later. And then how, you've got so much going on. You've got a really big thing. You've got a big vote coming up. You've got all these other things. Kind of tell us, Genevieve, what you got going on for the the group. So it is March 1st, and in Texas, all of our primaries happen on Super Tuesday. So we are four days away from potentially changing out the Texas legislature. And (laughs) Uh uh, so that's pretty wild. I'll tell you a little bit about that. Uh, In Texas right now, our primaries, at least on the Republican side, are really kind of focused on in two different camps. One, you've got the folks, there were 21 rural Republicans that joined with, uh, with Democrats last November to kill a school choice bill. This is the governor's preeminent bill. He wants to pass school choice in Texas. If we do that, that breaks the log jam for the rest of the country and can be a real watershed moment for America. However, bunch of Republicans and Democrats killed the bill last year. Well, it turns out they killed the bill in November and a whole bunch of primary challengers ended up raising their hands and said, you know what? Uh, That's not what our community believes. We do believe that every child should get a world-class education regardless of where they go to school and marry a bunch of these incumbents. Then there's an alternate camp because the Texas House of Representatives also impeached our attorney general for uh, corruption and bribery and uh, all of that. And the Senate found that the attorney general was innocent, but the House voted to impeach. So our attorney general has found about 50 something candidates to primary the House uh, incumbents to to say like, hey, this should be done. I shouldn't have been impeached. Uh, that these are his words. I shouldn't have been impeached. And uh, we're going to go change you guys out. So all that being said, we've, Texas House of Representatives is going to be a wild ter- uh, situation on Tuesday night uh, after the polls close. And then tomorrow, wow. Stu is tomorrow is Texas Independence Day. So what many people don't know, everyone knows about the Alamo, but very few people know that that process, that that fight started on March 2nd, 1836. And so tomorrow we celebrate Texas Independence Day. And my team and I have got 26 full-time staff across 14 cities, and we are launching our Freedom is Bigger in Texas campaign. Nice! I know. So we're going to celebrate what makes texas great and and also shine shine a light on hey maybe these are some areas where texas isn't as good that we need to shore up and really work to educate and equip and empower more texans to be a part of the solution in keeping texas the greatest state and the greatest nation you you've mentioned about 19 different things genevieve and i'm over I know. here I'm, I'm sitting there that's just this okay. weekend oh my goodness okay um our, our uh, Paxton and when he's sitting there and he's, he was prosecuted, you know, and, and they tried to take him out wrongfully. There was not enough evidence. What about the rhinos that were trying to do that? Uh, and do you think all of them, what is the status 
of the polls right now of the 50 that he has recommended or the ballpark for coming in for the uh, stirring up of the hornet's nest, hopefully. I'm hopeful. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I think that this will be, Tuesday will be a real test of his political clout. And what's nice. interesting is that there are some candidates in different districts across the state where the governor and the attorney general are aligned because the, they're, let's just say the 21 folks that voted against school choice they also voted to impeach Ken Paxton, our state attorney general. No so way. So five of those folks have retired. So now 16 incumbents have alignments between the governor and the attorney general. And I believe that many of them are going to lose. Many of those incumbents are going to Good. lose on Tuesday. And just for perspective, I know this is an energy podcast, but school choice uh, education in Texas is largely funded by the energy sector. So uh, we very much value and appreciate the energy space. And what I, of those, we only need like 12 votes to pass school choice in Texas. So wow. I think that it's going to be, I think that Tuesday could actually break the log jam, like I said, and truly be a watershed moment for the country. So it, it's going to be a wild ride. Uh, happy to be back on and do a post analysis with, uh, with you and your listeners, but it's, it's a real opportunity to move forward for Texas on policy that people care about that yes. first off keeping, making sure our energy sector is protected because we know that the energy sector pr created the Texas miracle that's funding a surplus in our state. That's yep. allowing our state legislature to buy down our school property taxes that will also allow schools or children. So you can see how all of these policies are really intricately tied together, but very, right. very few times do people actually take the, take the needle all the way through uh, or the thread all the way through the needle. This is so exciting, especially because in the great state of uh, Texas, uh, since I'm a Texas resident, you know, I can say exactly. that in fact, my cowboy hat is sitting over here. You know, you gotta, you gotta love a good cowboy hat. But we sit back and say, the state is funded by energy. I mean, honestly, we're, we've got Surely. shipping out natural gas, LNG. We're, we've got uh, nuclear, coal, wind, solar. Texas does it bigger and better in energy. And we fund the state with energy. So I, I kind of like it. And think about how many jobs. Yeah. You know, another great thing, Genevieve, is that this... And I think it's December or January, Texas has more financial jobs than in New York. And we finally are now the number one financial employer in the U.S. Isn't that That's cool? right. It is. So 32,000 financial services jobs have moved from New York City to Dallas, Texas, or the DFW Metroplex since 2019. So we great? are less than five years. Exactly. Well, you know, let's just talk about the basics, Stu. You have a low, low tax environment, low regula uh, a regula a regulatory environment that is less burdensome, certainly, than New York City. Yep. You've got a culture, uh, a state culture that believes in optimism and this belief yep. that if you can dream it, you can do it. You've got no state income tax, no corporate income tax, and you have space at a, co at a cost of living you can afford. So, of course, people are moving yep. here on the daily. And you know what's uh, kind of tying that into Governor Hochul? Um, wow. Uh, I don't, uh, she's pulled some more shenanigans this week uh, by saying that uh, she's trying to get um, illegal uh, migrants, and I'm going to call them illegal because they're not legally. Sure. And, and I believe Joe Biden this morning, we're filming this on a Friday. Joe called them uh, newcomers newcomers Not that's the new term <laughs> <laughs> yeah. sorry if for our podcast yeah. listeners yes that was me growling that was not my dog um and she has single-handedly almost destroyed new york's energy policies and oh that's who is surprised by this Stu? No, neither you uh, nor your listeners can be surprised 
I mean, the Biden administration, they have done almost everything in their power to usurp and kill the oil and gas sector. The They only care right. about renewables. And, you know, I was I did an event last week with Congressman Randy Weber, who's on the Gulf Coast of yes. Texas. His district exports 60 percent of LNG across across the country. And, and he said he said it perfectly that renewables can play a supporting actor role, but they're never going to be the lead actor. It's always going to be your oil and gas, your LNG, your coal, your fossil fuels. And that the, that if anyone's going to use these types of fossil fuels and do it cleanly and right. efficiently, it's America and it's Texas. And um, America, America, we got to say it right, America. You know what's America. funny? This, this is really so sad. I, I, by the way, you have an open invitation. Call him. Let's get me and you and him on a podcast together. And then that come way, on, you let's let's talk about this. T let's take California in the hypocritical uh, as um, uh, Governor Hochul's doing. Iran has now got a gigantic oil slick going on. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna weave this oh, back wow. around to Texas. Okay. Uh, um, 400, 400, 48 million barrels of oil in 2022, California bought from Iran. They don't do ecological wow. good producing of low cost oil. Genevieve, what does Texas do? We do low cost oil <laughs> at a price people can afford because we have it in our ground and we have lots of it. And they, California wow. buys 70% of the oil out of the rainforest, uh, the rainforest produced by China. So these, and then wow. Governor Newsom. I had no had, idea. That and then Governor Newsom. Horrible. Oh, it's terrible. So now- we have all of these hypocritical things going on. And then you have the uh, rhinos in the Texas Senate trying to uh, oust out uh, our guy that is trying to prosecute illegal voters. Wasn't that the whole reason they were going after him? No. And I, I forgive me, I'm not as up to speed on the Texas House's impeachment of our attorney general. Um they were, but, he was trying, to, I saw him interviewed and he said, I was trying to prosecute uh, illegal voters and illegal election fraud. And then he, all of a sudden he, sh they showed up running after me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He was doing a great job at yes. holding the Biden administration accountable. However, he asked, uh, I know that he did ask the state legislature to pay off uh, three and a half million dollars of a whistleblower settlement on his personal uh, for his personal record versus his oh. office record and so the house got involved because they wanted to make sure that taxpayer money wasn't being misappropriated it wasn't really about the illegal situation for a, but that's as much as i can probably discuss in, well, in any no, depth of knowledge but but he did say that when he was on an interview saying that it didn't okay. happen until after he was trying to prosecute everybody and he was oh, on somebody's uh, podcast or uh, interview and saying, Hey, I, I, I'm trying to shut down the illegal voting in Texas. That needs to happen. Yeah. Well, I mean, coming back to California and New York, I mean, they do so many things. They have so many bad public policies that completely put them at a, at a disadvantage to yes. just being a part of America and put, the rest of Americans at a disadvantage with buying power. And, you know, California has been trying to throw their weight around as a marketplace for quite some time. You know, what, you can look at the oil industry or the fossil fuel industry. You can look at uh, the pork industry. And that went to the Supreme Court, and what California was trying to do. Right. So California is just trying to throw its weight around. And you know what? People like us here in Texas, and I think everywhere else outside of the right. coast are tired of it. And we're standing and up to it. I'd like to put the border wall 
uh, when President Trump gets <laughs> back right? in, all the way right up California and go yeah, on just, the way. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Just get, I think we should do that, don't you? I, that would be kind of fun. But, Listen, all these California refugees are coming here, so I'm sure that they'd say the same thing. Uh, boy, Genevieve, I sure hope that they you get their number and you get them registered to help. I want everybody to understand, I don't care if you're Republican, I don't care if you're Democrat, if you are don't have your family and your faith first, and an American first, you need to be out. I'm sorry, I, I just, you got to be faith, family, and American first. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm offending you, but. <laughs> You, you certainly are defending me. I, I work for a company called Americans for Prosperity. So yeah, same page. Now you and I had a great podcast last time and we talked about some of the great things that you guys are doing. And as you roll out this big event, tell us a little bit more about this event that you've got rolling out just starting. We kind of alluded a little bit. What are some sure. specifics that you're rolling out on that? So tomorrow we launch the Freedom is Bigger in Texas Look campaign. Hang on for our podcast listeners. Genevieve just starts glowing. I don't know what it is. <laughs> she starts talking. To, she is fired up about this. I'm sorry. I'm not going to. I lie. am. <laughs> Thanks, Stu. I love it. No, it's Freedom is Bigger in Texas is really about how do we capture the spirit of Texas? It's not just the courage and the grit and the belief and in independence, but it's really honoring our past, understanding how we contribute to the present and yep. forecasting better for the future. Uh, and I see that as how are we how are we honoring the freedom that our forefathers fought nice. for, whether at the Alamo or all of the Medal of Honor winners that have come out of Texas. Texas has the most Medal of Honor winners in the rest uh, in the country. How do we honor the freedoms? that figures. we fundamentally believe <laughs> I did not in, know that right but it, it figures it is <laughs> right but like freedom independence liberty these these are principles that run through our veins and we need yep. to honor that but then also the opportunities that we have in texas you know 1300 people are coming to moving to texas every single day wow. and that's because we have this innate sense of optimism i i like to think that it comes back from our kind of our past with our, the wildcatters and the folks that found spindle top. You have to be an optimist to believe yes. in your next drill is going to be the next big payoff, right? And I think that that's trickled into a number of industries across the state, but it's not just the optimism and the belief you can dream it, you can do it here. It's our attitude, you know, yep. don't mess with us because we're going to do big stuff. Exactly. Right? And then that future component is really centered around prosperity. How do we ensure that there's prosperity for everyone as Texas become continues to stay the shining city on a hill, or the shining state on a hill that yep. really creates opportunities and prosperity for everyone? Because I believe that Texas is not just the Lone Star State, but it's truly the innovation state, right? You can look mm -hmm. at fracking developed here south, 90 minutes south of where I live. You've got the space industry, SpaceX, Blue Origin, NASA, all here. You've got technology sector yep. coming from Austin to create kind of like what we're calling the Silicon Prairie, connecting Austin, Silicon Houston, Prairie. and Dallas. I love that. Right? Oh, You've cool. got all sorts of innovation, especially with all those financial services jobs. So how are we contributing and forecasting to keep Texas the greatest state and the greatest nation. And part of that is we're doing this 20 month campaign that's really focused on both large scale events and small scale events. Okay. How do we look at having energy round tables, for example, where we meet with different members of Congress? So we just had an event with Congressman Randy Weber. Right. We also have an event with Congressman August Pfluger. They both sit on the Energy and Commerce Committee. How do we talk about Texas's portfolio of, of the energy sector where it's really an all of the above uh, portfolio? How, how do we support oil, natural gas, uh, renewables, Bitcoin, you know, all of these different sectors? How do we look at an all of the above strategy? Because when Texas is energy dominant, America is energy abundant. 
and both America and our whoa, allies whoa, win from time that. Out, time out. That was cool. You got to go back and say <laughs> that again. See, when, you got me all fired up. I'm sorry. I got fired up. When Texas is energy dominant, what was that again? It was when, Tex- when Texas is energy dominant. America is energy abundant. Love that. I'm sorry. That's the name of this podcast right here. Here we go. That yeah. was great. <laughs> I, I'm sorry for well, that was a great one. That, well, it's true, though. You know, we can do so many different things and we need to be we need to unleash our power. And that's part of what freedom is bigger in Texas is about. It's not just the energy sector, but it's healthcare, it's taxes, it's education, it's public safety, it's immigration. It's all of these things combined. And we can do that. We can have meaningful policy conversations, but we can do it in a fun, but also academic way. And the whole point is that we keep drawing people closer to who or to what we believe is the spirit of Texas so that they feel connected to the contribution that they can make to this great state. Isn't that fun? Um, I'll tell you, I also love the fact that Elon, uh, I love Elon and um, I do too. And and he is such a cool cat, but it's sad that Delaware is, is messing him around. And now he just says, fine. I'm moving to Texas. He's unincorporating in in Delaware. Think about the taxes they have just cost their state. Oh, didn't right. we just talk my about my in-laws financial? Yeah. My in-laws live in Delaware. My husband is born and raised in Delaware. And full disclosure for all of your listeners, I was like, "Delaware? Like, <laughs> where is that?" You know, and he was like, "Stop it. You're annoying." <laughs> <laughs> and he's the rocket scientist uh, in the family. <laughs> I don't know. No, he really is. For all of your listeners, my husband really is a rocket scientist. Uh, so yeah, he gets, he gets so perturbed when I say that. But no, the reality is when the free market is allowed to yep. operate, contribute, and work in the way that it's supposed to, innovation happens. Great things happen. Yes. And you want to, we, we want Texas to be the continued pioneer of of a great tax environment, a great business friendly environment, you know, having low barriers to entry and low regulations, because we need these creative ideas to continue to flourish. What's yep. make it's what makes America so special. No other country has the same level of innovation and creativity we do. And right. if we over regulate ourselves out of that creativity, we're putting ourselves in a massive national security disadvantage. And I wanna make sure that in Texas, we continue to inspire and we continue to have our our minds open and our creative juices flowing so, so that everyone can succeed and thrive. That's what being a Texan and an American is all about. Isn't that great? Uh, I, I, you know, when you go from, when you travel across the U S I always love being in Texas and Oklahoma and in parts of Arkansas and those people are weird. They're friendly, you know, and yeah. you go to other parts <laughs> of the country and it's like, mm, you know, yeah, I, they don't smile. Yeah. No. And I freak people out when I get on the elevator. I'm like, Hey, how are you? What's going on? And they're like, dude, you're weird. No, I like, right. That. I get the same thing. <laughs> you know, Hey, how you doing? Uh, oh God. Who are you? Don't talk yeah. to me. Yeah. But, now the um, the AFP Unleashing American Energy series that was what we already talked about in Lake Jackson yeah. with the wet Randy Weber. I'd like to visit with him. That'd be kind of fun. Um, He's great, and you know, it, with his district being so connected, uh, one in two jobs in his congressional district is wow. related to the energy sector, and so wow. I really appreciate his point of view. We share the same point of view. We have to change the permitting process, streamline it because it's stifling American companies and innovation, but it's also stifling our ability to get better right. goods at a better price. Um, so so how do we talk about permitting? How do we really talk about LNG? Because it's cheap, it's clean, it's domestic. And why aren't we leveraging that to our advantage? And And- how do we really look at an all of the above solution for the longevity of our nation, not just administration to administration? So those are the kinds of things that we discussed, and he's just excellent. 
Well, when we uh, let's after this is over, let's reach out to him because uh, one thing I will hand to the Biden administration is that the legislation through regulatory processes that their uh, agencies are doing right now are not uh, racially motivated against wind, solar, or oil and gas their legislation through regulatory practices are equal across all forms of energy and they're just mm. absolutely doing bad things there are over 24,000 renewable projects waiting on permits in the US trying to attach to the it's grid. crazy 24 so the money has already been spent under the inflation reduction act or as uh, Dan Bongino calls it, the porculus bill. Um, I, yeah. I Dan. Uh, so um, if you look at the money and the taxpayer money has already been spent, but yet it's going to be years before it can be connected to the grid, we got us a problem. So, uh, and, yeah. and the good news is it's on renewable as well as uh, oil and gas. So I want to visit but, but with Stu, him. That's he's ridiculous. Got any, absolutely how do we make it it's better? ridiculous these are well first off i have to give congress some credit when they did pass hr1 which would have looked it looked at the permitting process and said okay right now it's taking five to seven years to get a permit and you're not guaranteed a permit as all of your listeners know at the right. end of seven years it has to go from agency to agency to agency an HR one that passed in Congress said you have two years to pat to decide whether you're going to permit or not. So how do we create a level of certainty for these companies that are trying to do some really cool and really good things for our environment, <laughs> for our energy yeah. sector? It said we're going to run the uh, the process through all of these bureaus in parallel not one after another because right now it's a waterfalling process and they said instead of a waterfall we're going to run in parallel across all of these agencies together and if you're not getting if you've not yeah. gotten an approval or a, a permit you're automatically permitted within two years or at the end of two years wow. and so what the yeah what congress wanted to do is just make sure that we're actually getting stuff out of this backlog, this permitting process out of this backlog, that we need NEPA reform. And how our country bureaucracies are fundamentally working to unleash American power. Isn't that great? So what's coming around the corner besides a podcast with me, you, and the Congressman Randy? <laughs> well, we're going to be, I will invite you to all of our events for Freedom is Bigger in Texas. That'd First, we got to go win. We got to go win our elections yes. on Tuesday. And so the big thing is if you guys, uh, for all of your listeners, please vote. Super Tuesday is, on, uh, is in a lot of states and it's going to matter whether it's both in the presidential or in the state house. Please vote. Yeah, you need to make your voice heard. So we've got to go win a bunch of elections so we can change the makeup of the Texas House of Representatives. And that's what we're focused on doing. And then over the next couple months, we're going to be really having fun, celebrating the greatness of Texas, great. the greatness of our culture, and really talking about how do we make our state better. And that's in a nonpartisan way. We want to hear from communities all across the state. And so I ask you, please join us in that. And then once we get into the fall, we're going to spin up our political machine again and work to get our candidates over the line on election day just because you win your primary does not mean you win your general election and, and, and I so would, i want to help visit with any of them so awesome if they're in texans uh texacans and they want to talk energy we want to definitely visit with them so uh, can do that was easy wasn't it <laughs> yeah uh, I got a whole get lineup for you, you know, coming coming into this podcast. Well, you know what I think we can do is also arrange when we're at one of your events is line up a podcast booth and that way we can be there and have them sit in and then because we were we did 32 podcasts in 2 days uh while we were at Nate wow. in Houston 
and it was nuts. It was abs. I was exhausted. I actually I made it home it. on Friday afternoon at five and I went to bed and I didn't get home and I didn't wake up. It's the first time I'd ever been in bed for like 14 hours. It's in, uh, unbelievable. Wow. But it was fun. Yeah, you were due. You were due <laughs> some rest. Yeah, How the other big thing I would say that we're looking at, and I, I just remembered because I'm reading your shirt, it says oil and gas executives for nuclear. And nuclear energy is an is a huge opportunity in an area that America for Prosperity, we want to lean into. And we want to help educate people that this is not Chernobyl, that things are really changing. You can make nuclear much smaller uh reactors and things of that nature and so we're going to be going on an education tour so for your folks anyone that's listening if you have mm -hmm. uh, a nuclear business or nuclear kind of expertise reach out to me on twitter at g collins tx that's g collins tx i want to hear from you because there's this is a huge opportunity for our country and we should be leading into it um i love uh, doug sandridge he is the uh, executive uh, director for oil and gas executives for nuclear energy. And I signed his petition. There's 150 oil and gas executives that signed it. And uh, I'm all for energy. I'm all for all forms of energy, as long exactly. as they deliver the lowest kilowatt per hour to everyone on the planet with the least amount of impact on the environment and it has to be sustainable through fiscal, um, um, sus uh, fiscal non-printing of money, period. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. So, yeah. And let's just make sure that we add some no government subsidies or, you know, making sure the government's not picking winners and losers on that too. So, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, Genevieve, and so we've got your uh, Twitter uh, handle out there. What's the website for Americans for Prosperity for Texas? So go, so go to our website, americansforprosperity.org. You can find right. us there, but really uh, we're going to be launching our Freedom is Bigger in Texas website here shortly. Uh, that's what's going to be called freedomisbiggerintexas.org. Uh, but more okay. importantly, follow us on Twitter at Texas AFP. You can engage with all of our content. We talk about every single type of taxpayer issue. While we don't focus or work on policy that's in the social sphere, like 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 life or Second Amendment or any of that stuff, we focus on taxpayer issues. So when you need a taxpayer champion, come visit us at Texas at AFP, and nice. we will help be your champion and and make sure that the government is limited and knows that government money. I'm saying in air quotes is actually your money. Oh, I love it. Well, thank you so much. And give your husband a hug. Anybody that's a rocket scientist deserves a hug. Hug your I local, will do that. <laughs> hug your local rocket scientist. I love it. Well, I thank you it. very much.